Hi, um, my name is Izzy Posen, and I haven't posted a video on my channel for a while. Um, but I thought, I just woke up this morning with a great idea, um, just to have a bit of fun. So I thought I'd post a video of uh, me ranking um, Rabunim, rabbis and rebbers um, of the last thousand years in Jewish history, ranking them in order of, I guess, I mean, this is very subjective, um, in order of how I like them, really. Um, this, um, so the kind of tier ranking um, thing, um, you know, has been quite popular recently. People have been ranking all kinds of things. Um, and I created this one myself, actually. Um, I'll, um, there's, there's a kind of tier, tier maker that you can, uh, you can make yourself. Um, and I, I, um, I just created this this morning. Um, I will put a link um, to this tier maker in the bio, in the description of the video. So you can have a play around um, with it. As I said, um, this is very subjective. I'm not basing this on any objective criteria. It's basically on um, to what extent I like the people in question. Um, so I'll put a link to the description. You can make your own. Um, and yeah, it'd be interesting to hear, uh, to see what results you get, um, based on, on your interests. Um, but here are my, um, rankings of various Rabunim and Rebbe's, um, rabbis. Um, I hope, I don't want to offend anyone, but, um, as I said, this is going to be based on my own preferences, on kind of how much influence each of these people had in my life and kind of, um, based on my values as well. Um, so we have five tiers. There's the S tier, which I think stands for kind of super or superior, kind of the top. And then we have A, B, C, and, and D. Um, all right, let's get going. Um, so we start off um, with uh, Rabbi Kiva Eiger. So um, he is, um, I think, I want to say early 18th century um, rabbi, somewhere around there. Very influential um, in terms of um, his commentary on, on Shas and Gomorrah, on Talmud. Um, brilliant, brilliant uh, um, commentary. He always comes up with really novel um, ideas that have been very, very influential um, on the study of, of, of the Gomorrah of Talmud in the last um, two and a half centuries, really. Um, so I would put him in the A tier. I think he deserves to be in the A tier. Um, who is this guy? I created this this morning. I downloaded this. Oh, this is, I think, the Ari, uh, Rabbi Yitzchak Luria. So he is um, basically uh, the popularizer. Well, not he himself. It's more his Talmud, his disciple, um, um, Rabbi Chaim Avital, um, who popularized his teachings because I think the Ari didn't write anything. He died very young. Um, but he is seen in some sense as the father of kind of what Kabbalah, Kabula, is today. Um, obviously, he didn't invent Kabbalah. Um, Kabbalah has been around before him, um, but uh, he is the father of, the, of Lurianic Kabbalah. So he did. He was an innovator. He did have new ideas. Now, I so as I said, this is very subjective. I hate anything to do with Kabbalah mysticism. Um, I think you know, I'm I'm kind of more on the rationalist side of things. Um, I like philosophy. I like rational arguments, and I find mysticism really, really off-putting. I have to confess, I don't know much about Kabbalah. I've never bothered kind of studying it because I find it so off-putting. Um, and I find it very superstitious, I must say. I must say I find it very superstitious. I don't have much sympathy for the whole endeavor. I think it's a pseudo-study. I don't think um, it's a serious kind of um, um, discipline. But um, th there you go. That, those are, that's my bias. Um, um, just because of my disdain for Kabula, I would put um, Dari probably in C tier. I would put him all the way down in D, but he was very influential. Um, so for that itself, uh, you've got to put him in C. All right. Next, we have uh, the Baal Hatanya, Reb Shnaya Zalman of Liadi. He is the founder of um, the Chabad uh, dynasty. Now, um, he wrote in two genres. He wrote, he was a brilliant hal hal halachist. Um, so he wrote um, the um, Sheikh Noor Harav, um, um, which is basically his own um, kind of almost Shulchan Aruch, his own, um, um, you know, his own summary of, of Jewish of Jewish law. Um, although I think Sheikh Noor Harav is only on Orechaim, so that's just on the, the quarter of Shulchan Aruch, um, which pertains to kind of everyday um, everyday life. Um, 
I find him a, a very, very clear writer. Um, I love uh, Shekhanur Kharav. Um, I find that he has very brilliant insights and he explains things extremely well. Um, um, and I really enjoyed... Um, I really enjoyed studying Sheikh Nukharav when I did. He also has his Hasidic writings, mystical writings, like um, the Saif HaTanya, um, which I less connect with. Um, he's, all, I mean, it's incredibly influential, um, far beyond Chabad, the Saif HaTanya. Um, it's probably, you know, one of the most important kind of expositions of Hasidic thought. Um, um, and he's a systematizer as well. He knows what, so unlike, you know, Chabad is quite unique in the Hasidic world that they actually have um, kind of a philosophy, you know. Um, Hasidim in general tend to be quite chaotic in their thinking. They don't have systemic thought, with some exceptions. There's the Kotsk, Kotsk dynasty, um, they have their thought. I think Breslov also has kind of a body of thought. But, you know, most Hasidic dynasties and kind of sects don't have a systematic um, kind of philosophy. And Chabad is quite unique, and I think it, it, it owes to the Balatanya, who was a great systematizer, a great systematic thinker. He was a brilliant man, without a doubt. Um, I would put him... Um, hmm, for his halachic work alone, he deserves quite a high ranking. But even his mystical writings, even though, as I said, I don't connect with um, with that kind of thing so much, I think just because he's a systematic thinker, I respect that. You know, he's not all over the place. He thinks he has a system. I would put him an A tier just, just for that. Okay. Next we have the Boschentov. Now this isn't actually uh, a picture of the Boschentov. This is a picture, this is a painting of a guy called the Boschem of London, who was a con man, a charlatan, um, kind of, um, just a man who went around kind of, um, I don't know, making money out of being a magician or something. And um, he wasn't necessarily a very pious man either. Um, but it's become known as the Bo but the picture of the Boschentov. Um, it isn't, but it's so recognizable, I thought, um, I just have it here because everyone knows when you see a picture of this, everyone knows um, who who it's intended about. Um, Balshamtov. Now, okay, I grew up Hasidish, <clears throat> and I, I have ambivalent thoughts about Hasidism in general. On the one hand, I really enjoy um, its um, kind of I don't know ritualism and joy and song and community. Um, but I also find it incredibly superstitious um, um, and quite regressive and quite anti-enlightenment, anti-modernity. The Basham himself, um, it should be noted, a, a, um, a lot of what Hasidism is today has very little to do with the Basham. Basham the Basham Tov wasn't really the person who... Um, was actually the founder of Hasidism. The, the actual founder of Hasidism is, is, is his disciple, the Magad of Mezerich, um, who actually um, made it into a proper movement, um, you know, with lots of disciples and a philosophy and so on. The Bashem Tov, there's very little we know about him. He's more an obscure figure, this kind of shaman, um, miracle healer worker, probably, you know, probably not a great scholar. Well, to say the least, probably... Probably a full-on Amoritz. Um, Bashem Tov didn't, you know, there's, there's not much in his sayings that indicate any kind of breadth of knowledge of the Torah. Unlike his disciple, the Magad of Mezrich, who was um, a, tradi a traditional scholar, um, a well-respected rabbi. Um, it's more retrospectively that people have kind of seen him as the founder of the movement. Um, so he must have had some kind of charisma. He must have had some original thought. Otherwise, people wouldn't see him that way. Or maybe he was just very good at passing off kind of um, the impression that he can do miracles and, you know, and people were very impressed by that. So I don't know um, how to um, 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 kind of assess him properly. I'm not a massive fan, um, but also very influential. I think he goes together with Ari in the C tier. <laughs> and I think maybe a pattern is emerging um, here with the mystics um, who I'm putting in this tier. Okay, next up we have... Um, next up we have Reb Chaim Brisket. Um, this is um, the father of the Brisker Uv. Um, he is uh, seen as the founder of the Brisker method of analysis of, of uh, the, the, the study of Gemur, of Talmud. Um, very, very influential in the yeshivish world um, when it comes to studying uh, Gemur and analysis, very influential, and he is definitely innovative. So he's not only, you know, somebody who has brilliant thoughts, 